Welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Zainab Holmes, Regional Head of Standard & Poor's in Eastern Europe, Middle East and Africa. And today we're going to look into the Gulf Corporation Council, the GCC, and in particular project finance transactions. I'm in the studio with Karim Nassif, a senior analyst in our corporate ratings group based in Dubai. And Karim and I are going to talk about whether or not project, project bonds have the ability to plug any potential financing gap that may arise through banks' liquidity diminishing. Hi, Karim. Hello. Um, so recently, I think it was August, um, Rue's Power um, had a project finance transaction where they used uh, project bonds to refinance a water and power plant in Abu Dhabi. And uh, it has been five years, I believe, since the last large project finance transaction which used uh, project bonds on that scale. Um, and it isn't like nothing happened in between, of course, there were bank financed project transactions. But I think the obvious question is, what changed now? What five years after, after the event, uh, what made in 2013, um, what made Ruiz Power use project bonds again? Sure. <coughs> I mean, one thing to stress, Zainab, is that um, you know, we have had a lot of project finance in the region. Um, it's just been bank funded, not capital market project bond funded. And um, as you alluded to in the introduction, what we're seeing is a potential for a diminishing role of banks, um, largely because um, there's regulation that's coming into force, Basel III. Uh, increasingly, local and regional banks are starting to adopt these standards, in increasing capital charges on uh, financing long term, uh, in tandem with a great demand for financing by utilities ahead of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. So what we're seeing essentially is a confluence of factors coming together, which, prom which require that there be project finance on the one hand, but also uh, that there are other options other than the pure bank market to fund uh, project finance, such as the, the project capital markets. Mm -hmm. And um, one factor, of course, is that regulation, and then there is abundant liquidity in the region and very strong relationship banking with the issuers. So I think um, with, um, with Basel III and, and these local factors interacting, there is a potential that um, there may not be that much long-term financing available to project transactions. Sure. I mean, I think one of the advantages that the market is witnessing with project bonds is that you can go long term. So Ruiz was, the maturity was 2023, for example. Um, also, uh, you have basically uh, the availability for large scale transactions. So Ruiz was basically just over $2 billion. Um, so while issuers continue to tap the project finance bank market, such as Nakilat and Qatar Electricity and Water Company in Q3, when you want large tenors and when you want large size tickets, Project Ponds is proving to be very attractive. Um, I think all of this is also in the context of um, <coughs> really relatively low yields, uh, which make, um, uh, again, uh, project finance bonds attractive at the moment. Mm -hmm. So there is room for both like bank lending and um, project bonds in these transactions. But do you think that should the day come when there is less bank lending available, that project bonds will be able to plug that gap? I think that, I think that um, increasingly what we're seeing is that um, you know, the, the capital markets will have to play a bigger role. Um, the banks are very well capitalized in the GCC. They're very liquid. Uh, but already we're seeing the signs um, of change. For example, Sukuks are becoming increasingly utilized by effectively parent companies um, of government-related entities. So Saudi Electricity Company did a 30-year Sukuk. Now that kind of transaction lends itself naturally to project finance bonds, except they're doing it at the corporate level. Over time, these issuers you know, will start to want to explore potentially other uh, forms of financing, not at the corporate level, but through project bonds, through perhaps subsidiaries of the parent company, so that not all of the debt is concentrated in one place. Um, and I think <coughs> the potential that Ruiz offers in terms of for the power and water market is quite, is quite significant, and it may mm. develop to other sectors as well in the form of public-private partnerships. Mm -hmm. you, you mentioned other issuers. Um, what other transactions does S&P rate in the region? And um, a, a follow-up question to that, um, if I may, is when you look at the different sectors, where do you see the, the, the most potential for growth? Sure. I mean, we currently have ratings on four entities. Um, 
They include RAS Gas, which is a liquefied natural gas project um, in Qatar. We also have ratings on Ajman Sewerage, a user pay PPP sewerage project. What we see fundamentally is <clears throat> a lot of demand on the utilities. So we think um, there's a number of power and water projects that were financed in the bank market in the early 90s. And some of those um, are reaching that stage where they might be looking for a refinancing or a bond takeout, as the market would, would call it. And we think that is the, the first very high potential for increasing project bonds. But over time, it could be other sectors where um, PPP, public-private partnership, may be implemented. For example, in the renewable space, um, we could also see potential um, in oil and gas downstream um, uh, uh, projects, um, industrial projects, um, which are all part of the diversification programs for the GCC countries. Oh, exciting. Well, thank you very much, Karim. Um, unfortunately, this is all we have time for today. To get more details on our corporate ratings in the GCC and research, please visit our website, www.standardandpost.com. And I hope to see you again very soon on another Credit Matters TV. Goodbye.